I was humiliated, ashamed that I had so quickly foundered and been called out. Well, part of me was humiliated, the soft tissue, the part that was wilting over my rainbow sorrel with flecks of Eli's spittle lodged in my ear. But in my bones, even then, I could see that this was madness. I knew it was unreasonable that such a minor offense would cause such an abrupt and angry reaction. In what other workplace would that be accepted? Perhaps Eli was a nuts, but he was part of a system that was. Now I was playing a role too. He yelled and I was yelled at. Simple, really. Perhaps then, perhaps then and there I should have walked out. But there was some part of me, some angry, rebellious part of me, that wanted to tough it out. I wanted to beat this asshole at his own game. And at the same time, this dynamic, him yelling, me being yelled at, was very familiar to me. As a kid, there was no escaping my dad and his rage and nothing I could do to soothe it. But in the kitchen, it was a different story. If I worked hard and kept my head down, if I hustled, did my prep work, listened, hustled harder, and made no mistakes, well, then there was the possibility of earning the respect of these guys. That was better than the odds I had, I had growing up. At least it was a possibility. After a month of morning prep, I rotated to afternoon prep. It was in the same kitchen but different tasks with a different task master. The good news was that I didn't need to be there until 11 a.m. The bad news was that since I was up at the crack of dawn anyway, freezing my tits off in the unheated green room of the Food Network studios, it didn't really matter. The even worse news was that it was up to the afternoon apprentice to tackle the, dre the dreaded eggshells.